So today, uh, so let's do a very quick review of functions and functional scoping, and then we can talk about a really cool thing that I think you guys are going to like. It's called recursion, and we'll get to that in one moment. So first, a review of functions. So again, the way to declare a function is to write the word function. But remember, we need some way to refer to that function later. So we need to give it a name. So let's go ahead and const you know, some name like you know, f1, for example. It's a bad name, by the way, but let's do it, use it for now. Um, function, sorry, this is not my keyboard, so I'm, I don't type as fast here. Um, OK. Did I write that right? Function, yeah. Um, so that's a function, great, we all understand this. And within this function, we can make variables, right? So here, for example, I can make a const you know, a and assign it a 1. And then I can return a, which basically means if I call f1, how do I call f1? f1, f1. I open the hole. Does, does this hole require any input? No. Right, so I don't pass anything into the hole. And what is the result of running this right here, this function? One, exactly, because what will happen is the function will run and it will return a, which has a value of one. Therefore, this will be one, which I can then store, if I want to, in another variable called r, for example, right? Okay, this is fine. Now what's interesting, though, is that here, I can create a variable called a. And what happens is that when this function runs and returns a, well, it notices that there's an a here. So what is the first thing that it does? How does it find a? Can anyone tell me? Yeah, so the first thing it does is it searches, see these curly braces? Whenever you see those curly braces, imagine those as like a box, as it's often called a block scope. It's like a one block, one box. First thing it does is it searches within the box that it's in, yeah? So it searches in here between this and this, but above it, of course. Is there an A created within this box? And yes, there is. There's one right there. How, how lucky for us. So, and A has a value of 1, so A then takes on 1. Therefore, this function will return A1. However, suppose, okay, suppose I did this. Well, in this case, when this function runs, it will see, well, is there an A in my local block, in my local box? No, there is not, right? So what does it do? It goes out one, right? It goes up one. So from here, it will go out of this local block into one up, which would be in you know, the block that basically begins from here and ends there, yeah? And in there, it discovers this A. Therefore, calling F1 will return two, so the result of R is two. This is fine, yes? Now, suppose in here, just like we can write code and we can create variables, right? We can create a const, you know, a and assign it to, you know, three, for example, right? That's no problem. We understand that. In the same way that we can create a variable and put a number into it, we can create a variable and put a function into it. So let's create another one called f2, and let's put a function inside that returns a 6. Now what I can do is again, oh, let me, uh, yeah, this is good. Now what I can do is within this block, from here to there, and underneath this line, I can use F2. So I, if here I were to call F2, what would be the result of R? Six, look what happens. When I call F1, we go here, we create F2, we call F, and we return whatever F2 returns, right? So what does F2 return? Well, it returns a six, which means this turns into six. And if F1 returns six, then this also turns into a six. Yes? Makes sense. Good. Okay, so if we have that, by the way, what does this return? What, what goes into R? I heard nothing, which is, what is nothing in JavaScript? 
Und, okay, so undefined. What else? Any other? Function. Okay, I have one undefined. Do I have a third one? Error. Huh? A six. Good. Okay, so look. This R will take on whatever is returned by F1, right? What is returned by F1? No, why string? No, F2 ninja, F2. It's a function, it's this. F2 has inside of it, that this means put inside of, this function. So R is this function. So guess what? I can call R. Now that R is this function, when I call this function, then the result of this will be the result of running this, which will be a 6. No? Love. One more time. Okay, look. We, let me get rid of A, just to, so to avoid confusion. We have a function. This function inside creates a variable called F2. What is inside of this variable? A function, this, all of this goes into that. Remember, a function you can think of as this box that you can run. It's like a magic box that can take inputs and outputs. Remember that? Okay, so F2 is one of these magic boxes. We then return F2. Again, what is the value of F2? The function. Therefore, when you call F1, What is returned from running this? The function. In the same way that if F2 were a number, like a 9, then if I returned F2, the result of this would be whatever is returned here, and F2 is 9, so this would be a 9. But it's not a 9 in this case. In this case, it's a function. <gasps> yes? Anyone saying no? Barza? No. Che? No. No. Yeah. No. Uh huh. Now, the result of this, not F1, the result of F1. Calling F1 will return F2. Yes? This function. So, therefore, this, we can throw that into some other variable. Now, R is the result of running this, which. Again, what is R now? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, look, F1 is a function. It returns F2. That is the same as returning the value of F2, yes? Is, do you agree that those two are the same? If I got rid of this, that is the same thing as this. It kind of barza. No? Yes or no? No, no, it's okay. Just say no if it's not. Hatteje. Okay. Is it not clear to anyone that th that this? Returning a function is the same thing as returning, oops, sorry, ah, control Z, as returning the variable that has that function. Yes? Christ's sake, say yes. Okay, good. Now, if we're returning that function and we're putting it into R, that means R now refers to this function. R is this function now. So what can I do with a function? I can call it, I can run it, I can execute it. Yes? So let me execute R. I am now executing R, and therefore the result of executing R, in other words, the result of executing this function, is getting back what? A 6. Didn't you know? Who said no? Yes. 
Այս ֆանկցիոնը աշխատացում է, ստանում ես 6, սա ուտանում։ Okay, one more time. Ոնի մանեմ հատուկ է կարեք, սպանեմ։ Okay, նայք։ Okay, listen, listen, listen. Let's start. Let, but, yes, I will do that. Yeah. Okay, look. Is this not clear to anyone? <laughs> what if I were to call? Wait, wait, wait. If I ran F1, what would I get back? Who said undefined? How to guess on the Volts. Okay. F1, if I call it, I get, F1 is the function, but if I call the function, I get back F1, right? Let me prove it to you. Const r is that, and then I can now console.log r, and I get a 1. Amazing. AUA rocks. Okay, now let me put 1 into a variable const a, oh, sorry, one, and return a. Did anything change? No. no. A is just another name for one. So whenever you see a, it means a one. Returning one returns a one. Es kann parza? Good. Now, Instead of a 1, we are going to, remember this? We were returning a 1, remember that? You remember that, right? Everyone remembers this. Instead of a 1, I'm going to return a function. There. So f1 will return a function that I, when I print, it stringifies it, so this, when you console log a function, it prints the text of the function. Okay, so that's why you see that if I were to write stuff here like, you know, A, you can see it writes it here. Okay, don't worry about that. The point is it returns a function, yes? Now this function is going to return a 1. I'm still, when I call F1, getting back a function. The fact that the function inside is going to return something else has not changed anything. I'm still just getting back this, the function, the box. Cool. cool. So now I can run R and I can put the result of running R into another variable, const R2. And I can print that, console.log. And what I get is a 1. Why? Again, remember, this returns that. Therefore, it's the same as me doing that. Yes? Well, look what r is. r is a function. So if I run r, if I run r, what is r going to return when it runs? A 1. So running R1 is going to return a 1, which is why when we print R2, we get a 1. Do you see it now? Who does not? It's okay. D don't, don't be shy. Say you don't. You do? Can we do a quiz? Anyone who does not want a quiz right now? Remember, it improves your grade. If it's easy, if you understand it, take a quiz, up your average. Why not? Who does not want a quiz? Okay, if you don't want a quiz, it means you did not understand it, right? So raise your hand. Um, okay, so come to office hours if this is not clear. I don't want to keep spinning my wheels here. Okay, let's move on. If you understand that a function can return a function, which I think it seems like you do, uh, what if I put this function into a variable? Wait. And then I return b. Did anything change? No. No, go. So, uh, if, if 
Yeah, so, okay, so her question is, listen, suppose B took a value. So it took a value like, you know, C, and then it returns 1 plus C. Yeah? So when you call F1, what do you get back? The function, all of this, right, this whole function. So that means R, R, uh, R now has the same as, wait, that. Now if I were to call R, I have to pass a value through the hole because it's expecting a value, it's expecting an input. So when I call R, now yes, I have to pass a value to R. Same thing. Oh, hello. Oh, good. Uh, is that clear? Yes. Okay, now let's have this return a function. <laughs> uh, may I have a question? Yes, I'm sorry. Can we add a function to one which returns a one? If you call the function, yes. If you, in other words, if you call a function, you get a value, and then you add that value to a one. Fine. But you can't add one to a function. You understand why? It's a box. How can you add one to a box? Cool. Okay, so let's do this. Let's have the first one take A, second one take, wait, B, third one take a C. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you guys are going to like this. Let's then return, and then let's here, let's return A plus B plus C. Okay. Ta-da! If you understood the first one, this should not be that hard. It's just another level. If you call F1, what do you get back? Exactly. You return this function, the function that starts here and ends here. Right? In other words, if I do const r and I assign it to the result of running F1, that's the same thing as taking all of this. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Equal. That's the same thing as taking this and replacing it with its returned value. Yes? Cool. Now, notice, however, that f1 takes a value. It needs an a. And let's just assume a is a number. OK, so suppose I pass in a, I don't know, 4. So right now, r is this function here, right? So that means I can call r. OK, so let me call r. What is the result of calling this? It's the result of running this. What is the result of running that? Return this function. OK. Oh, but notice that this one takes a b, so let me give it another argument, like a 5. And that is going to return r2. Okay, so R2 has what inside? Function. This function right here, right? So now let's call R2 and put the result in R3. Oh, and it takes an argument, so let's give it a 1. What is now inside of R3? 10. But look, what does it do? Does Remember scoping. Remember those rules. Does A exist? Is it created inside of that and that? No. So go up one. Does, is it, does it exist between this one and this one? No. Go up one. Does it exist between this? Yes, there it is, right there. Boom. And what is A? Where did we get A? We passed it through the hole. Right? There it is. We stuck a 4 in the hole and it came in through A. So 4 went into A. So A has the 4. Cool, so A turns into 4. So it's 4 plus B. How do I find B? Same question. Does B exist in the scope? Is it created in the scope? 
No, go up one. Does it exist in this scope? Yeah, it does. It's right there. Cool. And what was B? Right there. Okay. So, so far we have 4 plus 5 plus C. Now, what the heck is C? Exactly. It's in our current scope. It was passed into us here from here. Is that why the color is different? I don't know how coloring works. This is, don't worry about that. Maybe. Um, so what this is saying is, okay, then add 4 to 5 to 1, which returns 10. Therefore, the result of running this last one, remember R2 is this function here. So calling it returns the result of that. Therefore, R3 now contains a 10, which we can console.log R3, and we get a 10. Right, so what you could do now, here's a kind of a cool trick, is what you could do is calling this returns a function, right? This function. Let's call that function with a 5. What does calling this function return? It returns that function. So let's now call that function with a 1. And now R will contain 4 plus 5 plus 1. Why? Because remember, first you evalu evaluate this. When you evaluate this, you call this function, it returns a function. Then you run that function here. You then run the result of that here. And the result of all of this is running, calling a function to get a function, calling a function to get a function, calling that function to get the value. Is this making sense? Anyone saying no? No, okay, no. I got one no. Okay, one honest person in the room. <laughs> All right. Okay, is it this part that confused you or the previous part? Okay, but the previous part is okay? Okay, now watch this. You guys ready for this? Uh, let's copy this for a second. Um, Let's undo back to the previous one that you understood. You understood this one, right? Okay. Now watch this. Running f1 returns into r this function, right? So this function is the same as that. Notice here I'm running r with a 5. Well, if this is the same as r, then I could just run it Remember, this is the same as the original R. So if I can run R, then why can't I run this? You got it. I saw it in your eye. All right, good. Um, yeah, yeah, no, keep that. Explain, explain, explain. Um, uh, other questions? We're getting this? What? Yes. Yes, I.O. Okay, now, we understood that functions can return functions. Remember, a function is just a box. A box can give you back another box. Fine, no problem. It can also take as an argument a box. Makes sense, if you can give back a box, why can't you take a box? Sounds reasonable, right? So, why don't we do this? Yeah, yeah, wait. <laughs> okay, so watch this. Let's create a function, f, and let's just have this function return a value like a 1. Fine. What an exciting function. When you call f, what is the result of running this? 1. All right, good. We know our, th our stuff. Good. Now I create another function called const f2 function that takes some variable. Let's call it a. It doesn't matter. And returns a, but calling it. 
Well, ah, maybe it's because we're calling f2 and passing f as a parameter. Interesting. So what are we doing? We're taking this function, this function here, we're passing it through the hole, it's coming into a. So this a refers to this function. We run that function and return its result. Make sense? This is the same as doing this. Look. You see how it's the same thing? Okay, so I'm calling this function and in the hole I'm putting in another box. The box then takes that box, runs it, and then returns whatever the box returns. Yeah? Eh? In charge on Right. So running F2, the result of this will be a 1. Question. Wait, let's call F here. One second. Let me simplify this. F. What will be the result of running... Oops, sorry, sorry. What will be the res... It's Windows, sorry. What is the result of running this? The function. I give it a function, it, re it gives it back to me. I, I put a box in the hole and it takes the box and just goes, it just gives it back. In this case, it's running the box and returning the result of running that box. Yeah? It's making sense? Okay. Uh, yo. Cool. So, we are, yes. If I give it, give what a number? I'm sorry. Ah, okay, so, good question. If I try to give it, instead of an F, if I try to give it a 6, and it, A now has a 6, right? A is a number called 6. I then try to run 6. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Wait, logically, does it make sense to run, to execute a number? You got your answer. Right. Of course, it's going to give an error, right? Um, so a has to be a function in order to call the function. Make sense? Ihatke, watch this. Yes, yes, yes. Watch this. Watch, watch. Ah, cool. Okay. So now, so now, let's call a with a five or a six, whatever. Let's have this take some variable called b and have it return one plus b. So what, are, what is happening here? We're telling f2, take this a function, this function, as an input. So a now refers to this function. We're then saying now run a, which is this function, with a 6 as an argument. So 6 goes into here, b. 6 is added to 1, and the result is returned. So we return 1 plus 6, which is 7. Therefore, the result of running this is 7. Therefore, the result of running this is 7, since here, when this turns 7, we then, when we run f2, get 7, right? You see how it's the same thing? Yeah. Yes, sir. Would it be the same if you put that 6 in the last line after f? After here? Sense? Ah, if I call this? Ah, okay, good. Look, if I run f here, sorry, what does the result of this section here? 7. So 7 goes into a, I then try to call 7 with a 6. Now if I were to do this, then yeah, then you return 7. Yes? Ah, look, see, the, see this, ar this variable here? What is this variable ref referencing? What is inside of this variable? This, right? You see, f is this. 
and I'm passing f. And remember, f is just another name for this, right? So I'm taking this function and I'm giving it to f2. And it's going into here. That's how. It made sense? You sure? OK. Um, other questions? We got this? OK, now. <laughs> yeah. Quiz? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. OK, look. Yeah, it was a joke. Um, so it turns out very often in code, uh, wait, one more thing before we move on to what I was going to say. Wait, one more thing. So suppose we have a, f a const, const f ghost <laughs> function, which uh, let's say that takes an i, a variable, i. By the way, it's i, not e. Stop calling it e. It's i. Just, OK. All right, so then we're going to call f with a 3. It's going to console log i. Ah, oh, look what happened. I got a 3. Cool. I can make another function, const f2 which does the same thing. Wait, let me copy that code. And from here, I'm going to call f2 with i, my, just I'm minimizing i by 1, so i minus 1. So what's going to happen is I'm going to call 3 here. It's going to print 3. Then it's going to do 3 minus 1, which is 2. Pass 2 here, and it's going to print i, which will be 2. So what I get is 3 and then 2, right? OK, let's make another function called f3. And here, from f2, we're going to call f3 with i minus 1. What is going to, hang on, let me minimize it by 1. Uh, what is going to happen here? 3, 2, 1. Right. In fact, why don't we see what happens? Let's put a debugger. Uh, let's open DevTools. Uh, one sec, one sec, one sec. Let's do bottom. Okay, wait, let me make this bigger so you can see. Make this smaller. One sec, one sec, we're almost there. Okay, can everyone read the debugger? The code inside the debugger? No, you can't, you can't read this here? You can, right? Okay. Okay, so the debugger, remember, is the place where you stop execution. It's a, like a pause button, yeah? You're saying stop right here. And then what we're going to do is go into f, th f and then passing it 3. So let's go into f. So now f i contains 3 because that's what we passed through the hole, right? 3. It, three, it went into the hole and now this is the inside, right? From the inside you're receiving it. So from the inside we receive 3 and we call it i. And we're going to console log i. Okay, so pr just assume it printed 3 to the screen now. Yeah? Then we call f2 with i minus 1. So let's go into that. So now f2 contains i, which is a 2, which makes sense because 3 minus 1 is a 2. Right? OK, so then we're going to print 2. We do that, and then we call f3, which just prints i, which at this point is 1. And so the net result of this is we get here 3, 2, 1. Any questions so far? Is it, you understand so far, right? Yes? Uh, can we put a function into the hole? Yes. Yeah, we did that a little bit ago. Yes, hang on. Um, uh, one second. Let me save this because I want to get back to it. OK, one more time. So, uh, doom. OK. Con const. Const 
Yeah, f has a function that returns a number. That's fine. Const f2, by the way, a lot of people seem to think names matter. They, I can call it anything. Bogos, right, with a b? Um, takes, you know, Bedros. Function Bedros. Okay, good. Now I'm going to call Bogos and I'm going to pass F. Okay, good. And it's going to then re return the result of running Bedros. Ster? Oh, can you make a function inside of your function? Ha, ah, sorry. Okay, look. His question is very straightforward. Listen to me. This means start, this means end. The stuff in between means write code, right? Code. Any code is okay inside of code. You can put if statements, you can put variables, you can put functions, do whatever you want the same as you would do outside. So, in here we know that we can make a const a and put a 1 into it, right? And we can return a. Let's get rid of this. Es barzach, eh? you know you can do this. I made a variable inside my box and I returned the result. Now instead of putting a 1 into that variable, let me put a function into that variable. Stair, Jana. Ha. Let's see. Argument. Okay, I understand. Argument and tamena anuna inputi, Jana. Anun. I think in the stair karuhem asem boros, che Pedros. Vora anuna. En argumenti vor kes katam. Yes kes katam funksan. Duk kochez da Pedros. Heto oktagosti vor pes funksan. Sa anuna argumenti. Argument ink sterits a pastalum. I ster carum function dam. Heto is function, gamatni ukatalvi is vorpesida anuna, voring a nursum coctagorzi. Nay, yes, kes tu pemusum dam. Du comet has a meat tu punes. Du von starbes es intervats tu per comenat satis, but the anunterviche. Yes, for kes talisem et tu per. Do you know how many people are in this room? I said that I was in this room. 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 Oh, yeah, controls. Yeah, you're right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Don't you wish? You know what's funny? I have to share this with you. you. When you program a lot or you're in front of a computer a lot, you get so used to control Z that sometimes you forget that real life is different from a computer. Yeah. And like something happens and you go, oh, crap, control Z, control Z, undo, undo. <laughs> And then you realize, wait, that doesn't happen in real life. And you go, ah, idiot. OK, sorry. <laughs> yeah. OK, <laughs> undo my key. <laughs> All right. That makes that happen. Interesting. The matrix. I don't know. Um, never tried. OK, Nike, does this code make sense to you guys? It does, yeah? Again, remember, look, we call a function with a three. This is the value that goes into here. So i is the name of the value that I'm giving it. i is now another name for the three that I gave it, right? By the way, why do we need i? Why not three? Because what if I want to use this function with a five, with a seven, with a 29, with a, you want to write your function so they're generic. Which is why we take an argument, and that argument can be different. So I'm passing a 3. The 3 goes here. I print the 3. I do 3 minus 1. And I call f2. So i there takes 3 minus 1. 
So two. We print two, we do two minus one, we get a one. We call that there and we print one. What would happen if I passed in a, not a three, but a eight? It would go in here and print i, which is 8, right? So this is 8 on the screen. Then we do 8 minus 1, 7. 7 gets passed into f2 in that i, which has a name i locally in here. We print 7, and we do 7 minus 1, 6. We call f3 with a 6, and we print 6. So 8, 7, 6. Sure enough, that's the result. Is that clear? Okay, now question. Look at this code for a second. Oh, one more thing. No, actually, no, just look at the code. Um, do you notice something? What do you notice? Okay. No, that's not it. It's the same code. This and this is a copy-paste of each other. Actually, so is that one, except you're not doing another one more step, right? If we did, it would be. If I, if I said print 10, you know, given a number, print everything until 0. So if I give you 10, do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 1, 0. Or not including 0. So 10 to 1. How would you do this? Yes? OK, so I'm hearing a few people who know how to program calling things like for, while, and do while. Remember, we're using constants. Is it possible to implement any of those with a constant? Yes or a no? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's like asking. It's like Very cool. Um, but wait, but so specifically, for those who know what a for loop is and what a while loop is and what a do while loop is, all of those structures assume mutation, right? At every cycle, you're changing something, like i++ or something like that, and you're changing if that value matches some constraint, and you keep changing it and changing it until it matches, and then you go out. Right? We cannot do this here. This is functional programming. I don't allow it. So what do we do? We don't. We don't use for loops, while loops, and do while loops. But we, there must be some mechanism, some way that we can do some sort of a repetition, repetitive code. This and this is the same thing. So why, if we, it's the same thing, are we calling a different function? What if I were to, instead of calling f2, just call f? So question. Suppose I passed in f8. And here, I change this to f, not f2. So what would happen is 8 would come here. I would print 8. I would then call f with 8 minus 1. 7. So it would come here with a 7. I would print 7, and so on. What would happen? Right. OK, right. So this is known as an infinite loop. It's a loop, a cycle, that does not have a defined limit, a finish, an end. OK, so think about it. Here's what would happen. If I change this to an f, right, it would go, it would print 8, come here, 8 minus 1, 7, print 7, 7 minus 6, print 6, print 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative da, 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 da. It would just keep going. Inch minus meg? Exactly, right. So what we need is a condition. Where have we seen, what is a condition? It's an if statement. We need is a condition which we should continue looping. If that condition fails, we stop looping. Okay, so suppose if I told you, write a function that takes a number, prints it and all the numbers below it that are greater than zero. What would be the condition? If I minus 
say if i is greater than zero. Okay, so I can say if, why don't we do this? Let's do something else. Listen, listen, listen. This is a better way of understanding recursion. Recursion has two parts. Listen, listen, this is important. I'm going to quiz you on it. It has two parts. It has a base case, well, this is the case that stops the cycle. And it has the recursive case. This is the case that loops. So whenever you think of recursion, think of writing two sections. The section that will end it, that will stop it, and the section that will loop. The first thing I want us to do is specify what is the case that will end recursion. So under which condition do we stop? When I is, if, I is, when do I stop, remember? When I is equal to, well, or what if I did negatives? How about uh, less than or equal to? Okay, when I is less than or equal to zero, how do I stop a function? Return. Remember what return does? It stops the function and says here, boom. Answer, done. So I can write return here. So it stops. But if it fails, if it does not go into the if statement here, why don't we call f again with a number that is one less than the number I have now? So what will happen now? By the way, here's the answer. Yes. No. Break is for for loops, while loops, and do while loops, and this is a function. No. In a function, you do return. Okay, look. So let's get rid of all this other junk, because we don't need it. And let's understand what's happening here. So we create a function that takes an i. Eight, go, you know what? Let's debug. Let's, but instead of eight, let's give it a six. Oh, sh okay, good. How, John? Oh, that's a lot, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. else? Ha, that's a good idea. Ha, ha. Okay, so listen. There are different ways of structuring code. Instead of checking that i is less than or equal to zero and stopping, I could have easily said, if i is greater than zero, then do this. Right? Remember, there are different ways of structuring your code. The reason why I broke it out into this way is because it's easier to think about it. Remember, in recursion, you always have two parts the part that ends recursion and the part that continues recursion. In this case, this is your termination case, the case that will terminate or stop or end your recursion. This is your recursive case. It is the part of your code that will continue another loop. It will keep doing this until the termination case stops it. Make sense? Yes. Because you could have done negative five. Just okay. We could have done. We could. I don't understand your question. <laughs> so we're about yeah. Like six, eight, six, one, yeah. Well, you could do negative six eight. No, then the function would not make sense. Right, but but you don't want it to fall. You don't. But here's the thing. Look, look, look. If I did this. And I were to pass in a negative value, what would happen? Right. This case will never happen because you're constantly moving away from zero. So you've just created an infinite loop. So just as just, it's always better to protect yourself against danger. Is it a big deal that we do this and avoid? having that possibility. It's still better, right? It's safer. 
I agree with you. If you assume that no one is ever going to give you a value less than zero, equal to zero is fine. But it's always better to assume. Or in Okay, then you get an infinite loop. If look, it has to match your if if in your condition you have a check for that, however, I don't know how you would do that if, fine. But if it doesn't match your if, it's going to loop forever. You, makes sense, right? Okay. Other questions? Yeah, we get this? Sort of. Okay, if you get it. Riddle me this. Write a function that takes a number, like a 6, and returns the sum, the addition, of all the numbers between it and 0. So if I give you a 6, it's 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Tell me. Oh, I have to. OK, let's remember. Whenever you see a problem, don't panic, <laughs> number one. Take it one step at a time. We need a function. Cos uh, factorial is multiply. This is not factorial. This is sum. Sum factorial? Sure, fine. Let's just make it up. Fine. Sum fact, whatever. Equals a function. We, we give it a number. Right, so we need to give it a number to then add up all the numbers below it, right? Okay. So now we give the stopping to them. Okay, we need to stop at some point. If. If. Remember, we're doing the stopping case. Don't worry about the. If it's less than or equal to zero, okay, fine, zero. Then what? Re just return. Okay, we're going to return nothing. Incidentally, what does returning nothing mean? Un no, it stops, but what is the output of the function? Undefined. Okay. So then, in charge of Ah! Eh. Okay. Ah. Okay. Good. Abdusus. Who else? Dwelsus. Anyone else? Okay, we know that we have to add something to num, right? Okay, so let's do num plus. Now num plus what? It's the same thing as num plus some fact one less than that number, isn't it? Do you see that? You understand how you get it? I, mean, I don't know how else to say it. Just stare at it for a while. Do you understand that calling this? OK, but don't we have to return something? Return what? Yeah, just this, return. So let's return the addition of a number with some fact, whatever. Question. Will this work? Why? Huh? Are you referring to this here? Yeah, that one stop because it gets bigger. Next one. No, no, no. Wait, we're returning. Suppose this is six, right? We want to return six plus some fact. Five, some fact five, right? Yeah, we could have add else then return that it would work. Okay, wait, 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 wait. At the end, when by the by the time we have one and we do one minus one and it's a zero and it comes here, what does that return? So this at the end of the tail becomes undefined. What happens if you add undefined? Probably not what you want. 
So how can we fix this? Yeah, return what? No. Yeah, we can return num or just return zero. That's fine. Ah, you want to check if it's negatives too? Yeah, well, let's. Yes, you, you're, yes, Kailia. Ha ha, Kailia. Ha. Okay. So, okay, let's let's test it. So let's do a uh, const result equals some fact. I don't know, some number like a uh, six. Yeah, fine, five. And let's console.log result. Interesting. It's not correct? It's trust the code. It's trust the code. Okay, let's debug and understand how this works. How do I debug? I put a breakpoint. How do I put a breakpoint? I inspect. Okay, look. Some fact, I go inside with a 5. Right now, num is a 5, right? I want to add 5 to the result of running some fact, 5 minus 1, which is 4. Makes sense. OK, so it's, num is not less than 0, so we skip that. And we go into some fact, num 1, uh, num, uh, num la, 5 minus 1. So we go in there. So now num is 4. Is 4 less than 0? No. So 4, I return the result of running 4 plus some fact, 4 minus 1. 3. Let's go in there. Then let's go in there. Then let's go in there. Then let's go in there. Boom. Stops. This is the termination case. This now returns zero, bam, 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 boom. And now result has 15. Yeah. Blank faces. Listen. Think of it this way. Function is some packaged code. Yes? You can call that function to run this packaged code. Fine, yes? You can call that function, if you want to keep running that packaged code over and over, you can just keep calling it yourself. That's one way. You can just call the function, call it again, call it again, call it again, call it again, over and over. The other thing you can do is have your function call another function. Fine, yes? Your function can also call itself. If your function calls itself, you're creating a cycle, a loop. With me so far? Loops or cycles in code have to have a stop. They have to have a termination case. If they do not, they go on forever, which is a problem. So we need a case to say stop looping. That's your termination case. The second case is your recursive case. Now, question. What would happen if I put this above my termination case? If I put it up here? What if I put all of this, this here? First of all, return means stop, right? So this code would never run. Here, let me not call it so I don't freeze my browser. Oh, sorry. If I move this here, first of all, you know that return finishes the function. So this code will never run. But even so, you can understand that the if statement, the condition that checks if something should stop, is below the part that does the loop. So we're always going to loop and never going to check. This is another infinite loop. <coughs> oh, crap, 245. Follow! Ah. Let's freeze it. 
Yes, you can do else if. But if you're returning, you're going to stop anyway. So there is no other option. Office hours are awesome. Yeah, yes, you can do else. Yes. <laughs> 